Discover USA. And what better place to start your visit than New York, bought by the Dutch from the Indians for a handful of trinkets. Today, it is a throbbing metropolis whose proportions are truly staggering. It has a flavor all its own, and its pulse is like a youngster's, strong and fast. Your first time in New York? Well, let me tell you, you came to the right place. the fast-paced, vibrant face of New York, the one that most people see. But it has another side, a quiet, more romantic, less expensive side. You can hire a horse-drawn carriage and, like a 19th century gentleman, escape the pressures of city life and go for a quiet ride in the park. If you enjoy people watching, take a stroll through Greenwich Village one of the city's more colorful neighborhoods. But the best bargain in New York is not to be found in its stores. It's a ferry ride to Staten Island, and the price is definitely right. It still costs five cents. Out there, beyond New York, is a country as diverse as the people who found it. You'll find something familiar wherever you go, because your ancestors helped to build it. And it's all there, waiting to be rediscovered. From the roaring and majestic beauty of Niagara Falls to the quiet of New England in autumn and a quaint little village in Maine. Maine is lobster country, and generations of men have made their living on the lobster boats.
It may be just a living to him, but to people who like seafood, the Maine lobster is a mouth-watering delight. Now, if your taste runs more to beef than seafood, you'll find a taste-tempting selection in restaurants all over the country. Whether you want your beef corned, barbecued, roasted, rare, medium, well done, the stockyards of America stand ready to serve you. You would expect to find cattle and cowboys way out west, but this stockyard is located just a few miles outside of the second largest city in the United States, Chicago. The poet, Carl Sandburg, called Chicago hog butcher for the world, tool maker, stacker of wheat, player with the railroads, and the nation's freight handler. Chicago is a city for lovers. It has a very special feeling of its own. If you've ever wondered how they clean those miles of glass windows, you may discover the answer in a rather surprising way. Thirty stories above the city, in your comfortable and hopefully private hotel room, you may come face to face with some men peering in your window. They're just doing their job of keeping all that glass sparkling so that you can have a spotless view of the city. Kings, queens, and the heads of state of practically every nation in the world have driven down this same highway. In stately buildings and graceful monuments, the history of the nation is recreated. No matter how you arrive in the capital, the very first thing you'll see is the monument to the first president of the United States, George Washington. From any vantage point in the city, its slender and imposing spire dominates the skyline. Nearby is a memorial to Thomas Jefferson, the third president and the author of the Declaration of Independence. Jefferson was a man of many talents, among them architecture, and he helped to lay out the plans for the capital city. Everywhere you go, you'll find wide, uncluttered avenues, gracefully curving drives, and lush green parks.
visitors from all over the world find themselves drawn to the Lincoln Memorial. Everyone who sees the massive brooding figure finds it a compelling and moving experience. In the Black Hills of South Dakota is a very different type of monument. The image of four American presidents blasted and carved out of a mountain, Mount Rushmore. The sculptor was Gutzon Borglum. In a land once considered sacred by the Indians and where buffalo still roam the plains, a young Polish-American named Julkowski, who had worked on Mount Rushmore, had a dream of his own. He decided to carve the largest statue in the history of mankind and to do it by himself. Julkowski bought a mountain. For 18 years he has worked his mountain and he figures that he has another 10 years to go. He chose as his subject, Chief Crazy Horse, the great leader of the Sioux Indians. The completed monument will be so colossal that 4,000 people will be able to stand on the chief's outstretched arm. No one doubts that Julkowski will finish the job. The mountain has met its match. Three, two, one. Cape Kennedy, Florida, where man is laying the groundwork for a trip to the moon. Florida is the sunshine state, where water sports are popular the whole year round. If you want a better view of the city, try kite skiing. Miami, the American Riviera, where swimming pools dot the shoreline, only a few steps from the ocean. At the very same time of year that people are playing and basking in the Florida sun, others are enjoying the ski slopes of mountain resorts. America is a kaleidoscope of colors and sounds, and the sound of jazz was born in New Orleans. The same city that spawned Dixieland clings to its French and Spanish heritage. It is a city of fun, of charming old buildings and friendly people, antique shops, fine restaurants, home of the Mardi Gras, and a streetcar named Desire. From New Orleans, jazz worked its way up the mighty Mississippi River by steamboat to St. Louis, gateway to the west.
years ago, the starting point for wagon trains headed into the wilderness beyond. Now, a modern city of interesting architecture, proud of its accomplishments and anxious to show its visitors a good time. Beyond the gleaming steel arch that spans the city and symbolizes the gateway to the west are golden wheat fields stretching to the horizon. The lofty ridges of the Rocky Mountains, the multicolored beauty of the plains. And then, like an echo of Earth's creation, the Grand Canyon. Suddenly, like an electronic mirage, there appears a neon-lit oasis. It's a city that comes alive at night, and from then until dawn, it's one continuous floor show. Many came west in search of gold or silver, and for a while, boom towns sprung up like desert flowers. But when the gold fever died, so did the town. Some of these towns have a way of coming back to life. If you want a taste of the real West, you may be in for a surprise. The modern cowboy is as likely to ride the range in a Jeep as on horseback, but you can still enjoy a pleasant blend of the old and the new at a dude ranch. All over America, people love parades and festivals. Out west, the rodeo is a favorite. There's nothing that quite matches the strange rodeo held in Indio, California, where they actually race ostriches. Palm Springs, California where 80 passenger cable cars take you from the desert floor to the snow-covered mountains in a matter of minutes. But America's favorite cable cars are the jaunty old relics that climb the hills of San Francisco. It's a city of old world charm and sophistication 
of fashionable shops, fine restaurants, and the famous old Golden Gate, your bridge to the rest of California. cosmopolitan cities to the rugged and untouched coastline of Monterey. Disneyland, a wondrous fairy tale blend of the past, the future, and the purely imaginary. It's the icing on the cake, an enchanted magic place that makes children once more of all who enter its domain. On this site, real prehistoric beasts have been trapped since the Ice Age. This is Los Angeles, a sprawling modern giant. A city of constant change and growth. gentle winds of the Pacific, it's a city of activity the year round. Grauman's Chinese Theater, where a visitor can match handprints with those of the stars. Hollywood is the film capital of the world, and all the glamour of the industry is concentrated in one star-studded night, the Academy Awards. Discover USA. Yes, Discover USA with KLM. 50 states invite you to discover them. 